Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. This was a requested video and this person wanted to know how you can touch a part and just get a point once. So the way this is going to work, let's say I touch this red part here. You can see I get one point for the leader stats up here. If I go back to touch this part again, it doesn't give me another point. And then I can go through for these other parts and do the same thing. So when I touch the green one, I get one point. If I go back to it, nothing else happens. And let me go ahead and load up a local server and I can show you what it looks like when there's more people in the game. Alright, so when you have multiple people in the game, each player can get the points from the part. So I'll run through with this player right here. Okay, so they got their four points and then I'm going to switch to this player. And as you can see, each player can collect the parts only once. So if I try to go back over these parts, nothing's going to happen. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so we're going to be writing two different scripts to make this work. The first script is going to be in the server script service, and that's the one we're going to take a look at first. On this script, we're going to set up the leader stats, so we're going to start by saying local function. The name of this function can be on player join. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass player. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying local leader stats. And it's going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a folder. Next, we're going to say leader stats dot name. And this is going to be equal to leader stats inside of parentheses. Next, we'll say leader stats dot parent. And we want to store this folder with the player, so we're going to say equal to and player. After that, we're going to make an int value for the points. So we'll say local points is going to be equal to instance dot new. This time we're going to be creating an int value. Then we'll say points dot name is going to be equal to points. So the reason I'm using a capital P here is because this name is going to show up in the leaderboards. So it just looks a little better if it's capitalized. So after that, we'll say points dot value is going to be equal to zero. Make sure we say points and not point. And finally, we'll say points dot parent. And we want to store this inside the leader stats folder. So we're going to say equal to and leader stats. We're going to create another folder, and we're going to use this folder to store all the parts or the levels that have been completed. So we'll say local completed is going to be equal to instance dot new. Once again, we're going to be creating a folder. After that, we're going to say completed dot name, and this is going to be equal to completed. The reason I'm using a lowercase letter here is because this folder is not going to be visible to the player. So there's really no reason to capitalize it. Okay, so after that, we're going to store this with the player. So we'll say completed dot parent, and this is going to be equal to player. And then finally, at the bottom here, we want to run this whenever a player joins the game. So we'll say game dot players dot player added colon connect. And then we're going to connect it with our function, which is on player join. Okay, and that's all we have to do to set up the leaderboards. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure that part's working. All right, so up here in the top right hand corner, we have our leader stats and we have our points value. So the only other thing we need to check for is make sure the folder got stored with the player. So if you open up players and then my player, you can see inside my player, we have a leader stats folder and also our completed folder. Since everything looks good here, let's go ahead and move on to writing a script for these parts. So inside each part that you're going to be using this for, you want to insert a script. Go ahead and just write the script once, and then what we can do once we're finished with it is just copy it and paste it into the other parts. Another important thing for this is that you rename your parts to have different names. They don't have to be exactly the same as mine, but they do have to have different names. All right, so once you add your parts and give them separate names, go ahead and add a script into your first part. So for this script, we're going to start by saying local level. And if you're not using this as levels, that's okay. You can either keep it the same as I have, or you can rename this variable. So local level is going to be equal to script dot parent. Then we're going to make a function that will run whenever the part gets touched. So we'll say local function. 
The name of the function can be level underscore complete. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. So other part is going to be the other object that touches these parts. Inside the function, we're going to start by saying local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players colon find first child. And what we're going to do inside the parentheses is say other part. So this is the other object. And then we're going to say dot parent. So if a player touches this part, this will be the player's model. And from the player's model, we're going to get the name. So we're taking the name of the player model and searching for that player in game.players. If we're able to find the player, then what we're going to do is we're going to say local completed folder. And we're going to say that's equal to player dot completed. So this is a reference for the completed folder. We're going to make another variable now. So we'll say local and then we'll say already completed. And this is going to be equal to our completed folder. And inside this folder, we're going to say find first child. And inside here, what we're going to be looking for is our parts name. So level dot name. So the reason we're doing this is going to be a little bit more clear later on. So let's go ahead and write a few more lines of code and then I'll stop and explain everything. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say if not already completed. Then inside this if statement, we're going to say local level underscore name. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Here we're going to be creating a string value. Then we're going to say level underscore name dot name. It's going to be equal to level dot name. After that, we're going to say level underscore name dot parent is going to be equal to completed underscore folder. And finally, we're going to give the player a point by saying player dot leader stats dot points dot value. And this is going to be equal to the original value. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And then we're going to say plus one. Finally, down here at the bottom, we want to run this whenever the part gets touched. So we'll say level dot touched colon connect. And then we're going to connect the function, which is level underscore complete. All right. So the basic idea for this script is whenever a player touches the part, we're going to store the name of the part inside of our completed folder. And then we can check that folder to see if the name already exists in there. And if it already exists in the folder, that means the player already touched the part. But if we're looking through that folder and we don't see the name of the part, that means the player has not touched the part yet, and then we can give them a point. So that's what this line right here is doing. So it's looking through that folder to see if the name of the part already exists inside of it. If it's not inside the folder yet, which would mean the player has not touched that particular part yet, then what we're going to do is add the name of the part into the folder. So that's what these three lines right here are doing. So we're creating a new string value. We're setting the name of that string value equal to the part's name. And then we're storing that string value inside of the completed folder. And then after that, we're going to give the player a point. So this is how we can keep track for each particular player. So each player in the game is going to have their own completed folder. And then whenever they touch a part, it'll add it to that folder. All right, so that's all we have to do for the script. So let's go ahead and check the game out and see if it works. All right, so I'm going to start by touching this red part here. And you can see I get a point. And just to show you what happens, if we open up the player's folder and then my player, if we take a look in the completed folder, we have a string value called level one, and that corresponds with my part name. So I just touched this red part here, which has a name of level one. So that's the name that gets stored in the completed folder. If you have different names for these parts, that's okay. P is in the script. It's just gonna double check to see if the part's name is already in the folder. So what's gonna happen, let's say I touch this green part now. You can see that the level two got inserted inside the completed folder, and the same is going to happen for each additional part. Okay, so if I go back and try to touch this red part, the script is looking to see if that level one is already in the folder. 
it sees that it already exists in this folder, so it doesn't give the player an additional point. Alright, so we just wrote the script for one part. To add it to additional parts in the game, all you have to do is copy the script by right-clicking and press copy. And then for each additional part that you want to use this for, you can just right-click and press paste into. So each part that you want to do this for in the game, you're just going to add the same script to it. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.